So I'm excited to welcome Janet. And so what I love about doing career advice from a pro is every month we interview different professionals who do this. And there's such a variety of people. And Janet, somebody who's going to share with us her life experience as a, not just a photo organizer, but actually a professional organizer and member of NAPO, the National Association of Professional Organizers. And so Janet, welcome to our call. And I'm going to let you tell us about yourself. Go ahead. And Thank you for having me today. Hello, everyone. So I've been a member of the photo organizers for about nine or 10 years. And my, my path was that I worked in corporate America for over 28 years. I have a Juris Doctor Law degree and I was working as a corporate trainer of uh, training attorneys on a computer research database. And I was do doing that for many, many years. And uh, when I was in my late 50s, the, uh, there was a, a large corporate merger and I got downsized and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, what do I do? You know, that was the only career job I had ever had. I didn't know anything else. And I kind of, you know, like was a little freaked out. And so I uh, tried to get into other uh, corporations, but no one wanted an older person. And so I realized after trying some different things that if I was going to uh, survive and be able to pay my bills, I was going to have to do this on my own. And I like, I never thought that I would be my own uh, business, my own, you know, business, have my own business. I never thought that. I always thought working for a company and they pay me every two weeks and that's how I, I had all those years. So it was like a shock to be out on my own. But I reassessed my skills and I asked my friends what I was good at. And everyone would say, well, like, well, you're really good at organizing. It's like, yeah, who needs an organizer? You know, well, I don't see that written in, in a want ad in a, in a career in a job posting. And so I you know, was researching that I was a researcher. Uh, and I found NAPO, the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. And when I attended my first meetings, it was like, oh my gosh, this is where I belong. And it was like an umbrella for me because I saw all these people that were highly educated like myself and had many life experiences. And they were able to draw on this and brought this into their organizing business. And I thought, wow, I can take all my experience, all my knowledge and bring it into this business. And I also had had for many, many years, a side photography business. I had been photographing for many, many years and I had um, developed a niche in production stills. When my kids were little, they did community theater and I started taking pictures there and it grew into a business. And so that became a niche that I did. And so it was sort of, um, it sort of was a natural uh, when I was approached about photo organizing, I thought, well, yeah, you know, I've been doing photography all these years, why not? So between that and organizing, I started my business. And it just, um, ultimately I became, paper organizing became my, my niche. But when I started out, I'll talk a little bit about that later on. I, um, I tried everything, but that is how I um, learned about photo, photo organizers and, and began my own business. What a great story. I love the, uh, you know, I, would you say that it's like a second act career? In a way, I mean, absolutely. Kind of the, yeah. I loved my first career. I, I got to travel a lot with my first career, but I loved my second career even more. And I'll talk more about that, you know, later on. But um, yeah, I I I wake up every day and I'm rearing to go. Your yeah, that's wonderful. I love it. Uh, what so? What advice would you give to somebody that's just starting out? So people that are listening, thinking, "Oh my gosh, how did you, you know, well, what do I do first? Because we do hear we get that a lot. People just, and it can be overwhelming to start a business, right? And I think you have some good insights on, on right. how to get started. Right, and 
so one of the things is that, oops, my chair just went down here. Um, <laughs> um, you have to believe in yourself, first of all, first and foremost, you have to believe in yourself. And there's kind of two different things, in, and I'll talk about both of them, is you have to, first of all, have that belief in yourself, and you have to have the passion for what you want to do. Now, when you, like with me, starting out with organizing, I wasn't sure where, what area I wanted to specialize in. So I tried all organizing, you know, kitchen organizing, garage organizing, moves, um, working with seniors, paper organizing, photo organizing. Like I tried, tried it all. And I ultimately found that paper was, because I have the Juris Doctor degree, because I have a business background, because of my life's experiences, paying the bills for my family and, and handling lots of insurance claims and real estate stuff, I was very familiar with paper. And um, so you have to try the l l taste, take a taste of everything, even within photo organizing. Like I don't do the scanning or making the videos or the montages, but there's other people that do. So, but, but you know, try a little of, of all of that as you decide what aspects of photo organizing you wanna do. Um, so you have to, uh, you really have to let that passion em emulate from your entire soul. And you have to, like, as you begin going out there and meeting people, you have to like, feel it in all the bones of your body and your muscles. You have to dream it and sleep it and breathe it. And you have to be able to say to everyone, you know, I'm an organizer, I'm a photo organizer, I'm a paper organizer. And it has to just, you have to really bring this into every cell, cell of your body. And you have to, um, another really big important thing is you have to take action every single day on your business. So even if you have another job, and you're starting the, the biz organizing, the photo organizing in the evening, every day you have to take action, be it sending out emails, placing a couple phone calls, researching, uh, looking at other people's websites. You have to uh, take action every single day. And when I lost uh, my job, it wasn't that I just lost the job itself. It was I lost my whole, my friends, my community, my circle. So there was that aspect of feeling lost and directionless. And I said to myself, look at it, 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 pick something and go in that direction. So if anyone on the call is sort of struggling with this, you know, pick something and try it. Just try it for a year. I, I said to myself, try this for a year. If you don't like it, you can try something else and go in that direction. But try it and then do what I said. Bring this really absorb it into your body, your soul. Tell everyone you're doing this. And really, um, and then within, within three months, I was hooked on being an organizer. So it, it happened much faster than I, I thought. Yeah, well, that was the next question that I was going to ask that people I think are, you know, I love what you're saying that we, we stress that a, a lot. We would say, uh, do what you love and outsource the rest. Mm -hmm. Now to know what you love, you have to try different things. Maybe you're thinking, oh, I'm going to love scanning photos. And then, you know, the fifth or sixth scanning job, you're like, oh my gosh, this is really <laughs> like watching paint dry. I don't want to do this. You can outsource it to other members. We have, uh, you know, we have a great community that where people work with each other all the time because there's so many different components of this. But um, so, tell us, how did you find your first clients? How and how do you continue to find your clients? Because that's always, will people really pay for this? Which obviously the answer is yes. But and then, but how do you find those people? Yes, I was really shocked, like about uh, setting pricing, and I can re still remember choking over saying like a price, you know, to people and thinking, oh, they're going to faint, but they didn't, you know, and then of course I've increased my prices over the years. So um, finding clients. So there's many different methodologies and some people love networking groups. And I tried many over the years, but that wasn't my thing. Networking groups just wasn't, wasn't my thing. Some people love social media. 
I do have a social media presence um, that I outsource people to handle that for me, but that's not my thing either. Um, some people do a lot of advertising with like, you know, Google ads or Facebook ads. Uh, that wasn't my, th my thing either. Um, for me, having a really good website and SEO, really good SEO. And it took me several different hires to find the right person to do that. Um, I found that to be one of the better ways. Also, being a member of professional associations and having a very good profile, that has worked for me because people will go on to NAPO or the photo organizers, or I, I'm also a member of ICD, which is the Institute for Challenging Disorganization. And I'm also a member of ADAM, the American Association of Daily Money Managers. And people go on to those sites because they trust. Here's an organization. If somebody is really serious about being a photo organizer, they will, will have joined an organization. They'll have done some training. And so by being on that directories, it gives that seal of approval. And so I got a lot of leads from being on the directories of these uh, associations. And um, being an assistant, like in NAPO, um, they have veteran organizers will post like, I got a job tomorrow, I need uh, uh, some assistance. And so by starting out as an assistant um, with, with people, that can can lead to referrals and jobs because they get a taste of what you do. And if they can't handle a job uh, or they're overloaded with jobs, they'll pass it on to you. And then just good old fashioned um, personal connections, telling your family, telling your friends, telling your doctors, telling your CPA, because my, I do a lot of paper organizing. And then of course, you know, if they've got photos, that's paper, I order, I will organize the photos. Um, talk, talking to people that um, like, if you get your, you have a favorite camera store that you go to and, and get your uh, pictures there, you talk to the person that works there and have, get your business card or brochure there. So the people that you know is how for me, that personal connection. I yeah. do a lot of, I'm of that older generation where we you know, did a lot more personal <laughs> sales than online. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense to me. You know, it's interesting when I first started my business, I connected with a computer repair store that, you know, people would come in with their hard drives crashed or whatever, and they didn't deal with the photos, but they kept my business card and things and people would find that. I mean, there's so many, uh, other businesses, frame shops, like a framing, you know, somebody that you know, people bring their, you know, materials in to be framed. I and mean, there's just so many different ways that you can connect with people that are interested in, in what you're interested in, right? Um, let's see. Okay. What, what is, what do you love most about your job? Uh, well, one of the major things is I'm in charge, you know, like I, no one's going to lay me off again. You know, all the hard work that I am putting in is benefiting me and the and so if, if you know if I want to stay up all night working um, or working all weekend that benefits me uh, the other thing you know um, and I can regulate when I want to take uh, time off uh, a day half a day off I, I can regulate that and then um, having having a passion for helping people and my my life's purpose is to inspire people and so by going in and helping clients that i know that they have a pain point and bring that bringing the solution to their pain point gives me a lot of satisfaction um and so that is what i really love about my my uh job organizing. And then um, lately I've been doing a lot of uh, you know, business coaching and helping uh, people that are starting businesses out. It just gives me a lot of um, personal satisfaction and excitement to be part of helping someone find their solutions. 
I like you when you said your mission is to inspire people, right? So you've, and I'm sure you worked hard to come to that, to knowing that, right? I mean, that's part of a, a self-discovery process, right? Over, over the years in terms of where, what it is that brings you joy and how you can, um, I mean, I can see it just through your personality on the screen that you're quite, you know, you love it so much that I'm sure your people are excited to work with you. Yeah. Um, so here's the other side of the coin though, because we always tell people, you know, one thing that people, small business owners, I think forget sometimes, or you get so excited about what you're going to love that there are things that necessary things that you have to do that you might not like of doing as much. And when you work for yourself and you're the solo entrepreneur, or you might have a small staff, a lot of it does fall on you. So what are some of the things that you don't like about what you do? So uh, I have delegated, I have a bookkeeper, so I delegate, you know, the financial stuff, even though I'm fully capable of doing it. So I, I delegate that to, to her. But with regards to photo organizing, one of the things I don't like is I get people who say, well, I've scanned my pictures, now I'm gonna throw them away. And I like, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. Especially the historical photos. Like you want to you know, throw away the pictures of the vacation with the mountains, okay. But these hundred year old photos, no, I'm not gonna let you do that. That's not what the photo managers association preaches. You must hold the, the original source, be it a negative, a slide, a photo. Uh, because as a photographer coming from a photography background, you know, understanding the history of photography and cameras, it's, it's not just the image in the photo, but it's the paper, it's the development, it's the type of film and camera that was used. Like you can't throw this away. And to give you an example of how this upsets me so much, um, one of the very first photo organizing jobs that I had, that's what somebody said. It was like, oh no, 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 I can't do this if you're gonna throw these pictures away. But most recently, I have a 99-year-old client, a man, he's 99, and he's been clearing out lots of paper because his, you know, his wife died, three of, uh, two of his three children have died, um, and his third child is up there as well. And, you know, there's no grandchildren to pass things on to. So he's been getting rid of a lot of papers. One of his friends, he had acted as a guardian for a, a couple, some of his friends that were older than he was, that died many years ago. And as we were going through papers recently, he found a lot of historical photos of the, the his family. And he just, oh, let's just throw them away. I said, I can't do that. I will on my own time research this family's name to try to find some great great nieces or nephews i can't throw away so that's what i'm doing right now because it hurts me so much to see old photos being trashed wow that's amazing any luck yet so far in finding anybody or is it i found some information about one of the people and if it is a relative then they're like a fam they were a famous baseball player so i think i'll have an easy time if he is related uh contacting him uh, yeah. But I know the That's other amazing. family they came from, I think it was um, Illinois. So I'm going to, you know, research what I can. And, um, and let's see, another question I have, and then people, folks, if you have questions, go ahead and start putting them in the chat. And in a few minutes, we'll turn it over uh, to Q&A. And Kate will either, I think if we have a small enough group, we might be able to, might be able to come on and ask your question live if you'd like, or we could, you know, just read it out loud. But um Whoops, I just lost track of my, uh, I have my questions all here. Uh, so your skills from your past life experience. So I think a lot of times when people are thinking of starting a business or have a business, they don't realize that the skills that you developed in your past career are probably very helpful. I've, I've, that's come to me over the years as I've done, as I started the photo managers, I, my background was in sales and marketing for a net local television station. And I used to have to make a lot of presentations. And when I first started my own business, I started doing, uh, got photos need help was my, was my little catchphrase. And I would do presentations at lots of local libraries and things. And it dawned on me one day, well, of course I started out that way because I used to make sales presentations. So in my mind, the first thing you would do if you wanted to talk to somebody was present them with information. So that was just a way that I realized my 
wor old work experience translated into things I was doing today. So how about you, Janet, as an attorney, you know, as well, uh, lots of different work experience. So uh, when I, um, so I have a Juris Doctor degree, I was never a practicing attorney, but I worked as a corporate trainer in, for a company that we taught legal research to attorneys. So I did what you did. I had to go out and do a lot of presentations on this uh, computer database so that public speaking became a real benefit because I do, as I'm doing today, a lot of, a lot of speaking. And um, I worked very closely with the sales team because I would do the presentation on the various research databases and then they would close the sale. So I learned how to find the pain points that that law firm or attorney was, was handling and how to research that. And so I would present this. So I work a lot with, um, my, with as I'm coaching and mentoring people now, helping them find the pain points of their clients. And then handling paper, as I said, I handled you know, the finances of my family. Um, I, uh, my, I had helped, you know, I had founded my uh, photography business. I had an ex-husband who I had helped start when we were married, um, his business. So I had done all these things with starting businesses and handling paper and, you know, owning property and stocks and, and being able to read all those statements and real estate papers and insurance documents. I had all of this experience and, and that's why I've been able to bring that into my business because a lot of my clients, their spouse died, who was the one handling the family finances. I can help do that for them. They don't understand what the questions, they don't know the questions to ask. If there's fraud on their credit card, they don't know how to handle that. So I can do that. So all of this experience I was able to bring into uh, my, my business. And that's what I'm helping people with, with now going forward. That's fascinating too. The Dell, is that, is that part of the daily money managers? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. that yeah, that's, with, yeah. yeah. So it's, I'm, I've got a very unique combination of paper organizing and the, and the daily money, money management. And it's really important to have that solid business foundation, especially this past year, when people had to file for unemployment, they applied for PPP loans, you know, when COVID hit. So if they didn't have their proper uh, foundation to their business, they didn't have proper paperwork, they didn't have proper uh, papers showing payroll and the, the tax forms, they had a hard time collecting unemployment and getting the loans. So this is why I really stress the, the foundation of your business is very important. Yeah. So what I like about Janet too, as far as like us bringing, you know, here's career advice from the photo managers and here's Janet who does, you know, money management for senior people, you know, seniors, and she does, uh, uh, you know, paper organizing and then also touches the photos and things is to help people realize that there are so many different areas that you can focus in, in, um, in this, in a world of, of offering services to clients. But usually the, it seems like the, the number one underlying, you know, thread here is that you're, you're helping people manage uh, their things that are very important to them. They're like personal effects, right? You know, your personal papers and things like that are your personal effects. Your photos are very personal part of your, your life experience and that you want to pass down to the next generation. So those, that seems that's the common thread that really runs through everything that you're talking about, right? right. Um, so that's fascinating. That's, that's wonderful to, to, uh, to know about all these things. So are there questions, Kate, that people have kind of popped on and um, do you want to have taken? Yeah, so beautiful. we've got one question here um, from Kim. So she asked if you were able to go back and talk to younger you when you were just beginning photo organizing or your organizing career in general, what would you tell yourself? Lessons learned, what would you do differently or the same? Kate, can you hear me? What happened? Can you not hear me? Um, Janet, are you? Yeah, can you I can you hear me? What did I do? You guys can't hear me though? I, I heard I heard you. You heard my I, question? Yeah, I heard the question and okay. it was what would I say to my younger self That's right. when I was starting my own business? Um well it's what I said is, is that I can do it. 
um, I remember I was so lost. And I remember saying to myself, um, like I, I'm a really hard worker and I just, I wanted to work again for a company where I could work hard. I, I just love to, to work. And I um, remember going into like a, a, a 7-Eleven store. I don't know if you have 7-Elevens on the East Coast. Uh, and I remember going to gas stations and I saw people it, like immigrants and having they they barely spoke English but they built a business and I would say to myself like Janet you come from family of immigrants your your grandparents were immigrants like if they could do it you can do it with you're educated so why like get out of your own way and just do it and that's why I had to say to myself you can't just think about starting a business. You have to take action every single day. And when I um, am coaching clients, I will we'll work out a whole week's worth or two weeks worth of the actions that they're gonna take every single day on their business. Because I, we wanna program your brain and train your brain to be that business person and you just, you have to take action every day. So I hope that that helps. I, I used to, when I was first, I, for a minute there, I lost uh, every, lost hearing everybody. So if I repeat anything, but when I first started my business, I, I used to say, I'm gonna do one thing really well today. Like, cause it could be overwhelming. There were so many tr things to do that I would feel at the end of a day, like I didn't do anything right. <laughs> so I finally, I changed my way of talking to myself and said, you know, I'm going to do one thing well today. And that way there, um, if I could just accomplish one thing, then each day, another step, another step in the right direction. And it, it definitely made a difference. And attending, uh, being a member, as we talked about, of different associate, of associations is really, really important because one, they offer training. Kathy offers tremendous training for people. Uh, the other associations I belong to also do that. But it's not just the training and, and it's not just um, you know, the seal of approval that you're a member of this association, but it's also that you have a new circle to ask mm -hmm. questions. There's times that I've posted on the, the Facebook and said, you know, asked a photo organizing question and I got good responses. And you meet people so that like, like Kathy said, delegate. So, if you don't want to do the scanning or the video conversion or whatever, you're going to meet people through the photo organizer group that do that in your area. So these are the benefits of belonging to professional associations. Yeah, it's much more fun to do this with others. And yeah. then you can, and then we, we happen to use Facebook, a private page. It's not the advice for the pros that some people might know, but a different one that's just for members. And um, it's the most giving group. I mean, there's no question that you're going to not, you can't get stumped from a client or somebody posted something funny today that somebody, well, it wasn't funny, but a client had sent her a note saying that she lost photos and the woman, <laughs> and then, you know, she just kind of vented about what that felt like. And then the woman said, oh no, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I never sent you those photos. But, you know, she was able to say on this page for a moment, like, and I know every person reading that, felt that same fear in the pit of their stomach, like, oh my gosh, like, um, could such a thing ever happen? And so she's getting a ton of like love and support from everybody like, yeah, that must have been a hard question. So I mean, just that those kind of things are really helpful when you're by yourself and you, you feel like I'm in this all alone and you're not, you have lots of other people. I think and that ethics, ethics oh. is a very important too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, each of the associations have ethics and yeah. following the ethics is very important. I was going to say, Jenna, I think that um, your comment about how uh, when you got downsized from the um, the firm you were working with, uh, you you felt like you lost, you know, your friends, your circle, your work friends, and and so many of us spend so many hours working that that becomes our kind of second family, and to lose that, uh, you know, in the corporate world is um, is a big deal, and, and I feel like that's one thing that these associations, I'm sure you feel it with NAPO as well, but the photo managers brings back to people, I think, is that 
kind of circle of you know support and as Kathy said that kind of water cooler camaraderie and um, it's nice that we're able to provide that. That's right. Uh, I don't have any other questions on the chat. If anybody wants to pop off, there's just a few folks on the call. So if you want to um, turn your mute and your video off and pop on and ask Janet a question, that would be great. I think we have mostly members on the call today. And, and, and because you maybe have members on the call, I just want to say, don't be afraid of your business evolving either. You know, Kathy and Apo and then the photomore managers yeah. have gone through several metamorphoses. And I too, I was working under my own name for the first like six years of my, of my business. And then um, it grew and I incorporated. So your business will always evolve and you should, it should evolve. It's good for yeah, you. It's, it's great advice. It is, uh, and right, I, I always think if I knew, you know, there's, it's, I'm always learning. I mean, one thing I love about what we do is that I'm, I'm always learning. I, you know, every day I have to learn something new, it feels like sometimes. So whether it's a, using a new software or setting up a, a, you know, trying to learn something new about social media or save your photos month or those of you as well. And so there's, and it's for my own advantage. So I think that part in the willingness to have, I guess, a willingness to know that you can figure it out, right? I have right, right behind me on my wall, there's that saying that is uh, Marie, or Marie Forleo, but everything is figure outable. So like when we went from the Apo to the photo managers, uh, that was a that was a hard transition of a new website. And there were days when I was like, what am I doing? And then I'd think, okay, Kathy, every, everything is figure outable. Take a breath and <laughs> you can figure it out. So hopefully those of you that if you're feeling any of those feelings, you're not alone and, and you can figure things out. All right, Janet, I'd be interested in, in um, this is Kate, uh, hearing about um, kind of the the division in your business between kind of work you do with paper organizing and then um, how many people uh, have you do photo work too? Do people come to you first for kind of the paper organizing and then realize you offer photo services or how does that work? Yes, so most of the time, the majority of my clients come to me first for organizing whether it's organizing paper or organizing the clutter in their closet. And then uh, I'll see uh, photos in a shoebox, or I'll see a lot of tapes or uh, films or, and then I generally bring it up. Uh, that's the majority. Every once in a while, people will call me directly for photo organizing, but most of, mostly it comes about because I'm helping um, with organizing generally. That makes sense. I imagine you you run, turn up a lot of things as you're helping people sort out closets and, and papers and offices and things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a number of members who I know um, are organizers or, you know, have been, you know, regular kind of professional organizers to start and have added on a photo organizing as services. And I think there's some folks um, I might have to try to tag them if they're not on this call um, who are um, actually going the other way and adding um, organizing services onto their their photo organizing services. Yeah. So it's, I think it can, it can kind of go both ways. It's nice. Yes, there's, mm -hmm. there's quite a few, a lot actually of people from Naples, Los Angeles, where I am, mm -hmm. who are members of the photo managers because it does go hand in hand. And you might, if, you're, if you don't know about Napo, you may want to check it out if you have a chapter in your city and see in that chapter if any of them are uh, photo organizers. And if not, that's a resource. That's an association that you could get involved with because as they're clearing out the clutter or they're helping somebody move, a lot of people when they're moving, uh, especially if they have to downsize, they can't take 100 photo albums. And so they want to get things scanned. So. Um, that would be a source of working with other organizers who are downsizing and moving people. Move managers, there's an organization called uh, Senior Move Managers. So there's many, many places that you can team up with. Right, those cross uh, synergy, that synergy crosses over right. all the time. Yeah, 
some of my, my first, um, in fact, one of my first big, biggest clients was a professional photo organizer. I mean, a professional NAPO organizer, residential organizer called me and asked if I would, if she would, she said to me, I'll pay, would you organize what's your hourly rate? And then I'll pay if I, would you organize this client's photos and I'll pay you, you bill me, not her. And, um, so I did that for about three or four months. And then it dawned on me, which seems so obvious now, but I mean, that's how green I was like, oh, she's charging her more than, you know, she's charging her, her full rate and then paying me, which was, it made total sense. So she had developed a relationship with that client. And then eventually I took over that, the photo organizing part of that client, but it was a wonderful way for me to get a great job and, um, and understand how the whole process worked. That's well, and that's, that's something I want to tell the people on the call, what you just said, it's like, we might think we're going to do this one thing. And then all of a sudden a situation like that happens. And that's the first year out from losing my job. Uh, different friends referred me to different people to work on special projects. And it was, it didn't dawn on me that what I was doing for these people was like project management. Like I was helping people with different projects and it never dawned on me that that was organizing until like a year later. So really pay attention to some of these things that you might be doing because therein lies your future career. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That you, that things come natural to you that to other people. Uh, I always joked, you know, the, the fact that I have the word organizing attached to anything I create, I I'm great at organizing photos, but I'm not, I would never be a residential organizer. <laughs> I need a residential organizer. That's just like, you know, my husband would agree with you. He's much more, uh, you know, uh, he's the guy who puts all the shoes, lines the shoes up, not me. So um, I'm more creative, you know, right brain. Well, I think um, again, any other, anybody else want to come off mute or s share their own experiences or ask a question? Otherwise, we're thrilled to have uh, Janet with us today. If you're interested in joining and learning more about the photo managers, this is a great month to join. It's part of Save Your Photos Month. We actually have quite a few uh, additional opportunities for you to, uh, we have our Business 101 guide that's included in membership this month and also uh, the ABC or the basics of digital photo organizing because that's a skill set that we've realized just because you're a digital native maybe or you use a lot of digital photos there's some basic skills and so we've created a course for that so that's included in your membership so you can learn more about that on our website and we'd love to welcome you uh, at the same time Janet thank you so much for your time today and it's been a pleasure getting to know you better and thank you everybody that joined and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.